have any changes on the agenda and public comment other than folks that are on the agenda? No more changes? Negative. Thank you. Um, let's do the quick because these things get left out. We want to do the errors and omissions and we get to the end and then we don't do it. The errors and mission at the fifteen thousand dollar increase on a bishop parcel. We are combining um two parcels into one, removing a name and adding site improvements. Probably okay. motion. To accept it. To accept it. I'll make the motion to accept it. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um Nick Lanch. Hi there. Hi there. Welcome. You folks, if you see in your uh, in your packet, Nick reached out to me, and he is interested in being the town representative on the rural community transportation program, which we have not had a representative for a number of years. So, if someone was interested, I said, "You bet." <laughs> <laughs> we hardly ever say no to volunteers. <laughs> um, and I know you saw his letter, Nick. Since we just a couple of minutes, if you'd. Um, um, let folks know who you are and, and how you got interested in this. Sure thing. Uh, do I sound okay? Yeah, sound great. Great. Uh, so hi, everyone. Those of you who don't know me, I've lived in Hyde Park, I think about 12 years now. Uh, my background is in engineering, and uh, I work uh, for a group called ICF. Um, we do a lot of public interest consulting, um, a lot of environment, infrastructure, public health work. Uh, as part of that, I've gotten to know sort of the needs of transportation, and in particular, rural transportation is a really critical one. And uh, I got to know the organization, RCT, through Caleb, the new executive director this past year, and he reached out to talk about how the the system needs to understand how to evolve uh, and how sustainable that can be, but but mostly how much better and cheaper it can get and increasing accessibility and the quality of uh, connections for folks to get around um, and really thinking forward into the vision of what that looks like this year, yes, but also the next several years. Um, I'm hoping to be young enough to be with it for a while, but interested in learning more how I can help. And I feel like uh, Hyde Park is really sort of an interesting example of what they seek to serve um, and thinking about how to connect them to some of the other uh, parts of the system. Uh, I uh, am interested in learning more how Hyde Park's needs can be represented through me. I uh, would love to meet more of you, but ultimately uh, really interested in trying to understand where they're at and uh, how I can help. Well, I, I think um, if you deal with any form of human services. Um, the first and the biggest issue that always comes up is transportation and lack of either their own private transportation or access to affordable public transportation. And um, so, as you well know, it's not a tiny problem, but um, I uh, we, we appreciate your interest in it and you being willing to to represent Hyde Park on the board and to take your experience to that board. I'm sure you'll learn a lot, but I don't doubt at all that you will have a lot to, to, uh, to offer to the board. Do anybody else have any questions? Nope, okay. Probably what I need is a motion to appoint him for a list, uh, two years. I'll make the motion to appoint Nicholas to a two-year term. Um, that would end up March 26. So. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Too late now. <laughs> thank hey, you all. Hey. Yeah, thank you. And if sometime you want to chat, just reach out to me. We can talk or talk with Ron and happy to discuss issues with you. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. 
Okay, thanks for doing it, Nick. And thanks. you're welcome to stay if you want. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, my goodness, look at all these library people. <laughs> you brought us some good books to read? <laughs> okay, well, let's see a good old favorite time of year budget season. So who's going to speak for the library? I'll do ask you to come up here. We'll pivot this mic around to you a little better and introduce yourselves, whoever's going to do it. You get more candy if you sit up here. <laughs> Hi, good evening. I can't just stay right there. No, no, because we need, because people that are listening, you're okay. recording. You're really need to right. turn it. So you yeah. keep that one, Savannah. Yeah. Okay. Susan yeah. will turn this one just a little bit towards the speaker. I'll get to that. Savannah will also be able to That's good. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jim Noyes. I'm the the uh, treasurer for Lampier Memorial Library, and we all came out in kind of full force tonight just because we wanted you to see who we are. I mean, you see our names in the town report, but maybe you don't see these people regularly in public and we just thought it'd be nice for you to match your face to those names yeah. and also we're all here to express our gratitude for your support in the past the last couple of years have you know been challenging for everybody and you really have come through strongly with the library we really 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 appreciate that no we appreciate the library you guys do a lot of great stuff in the community you really do we're lucky we have such a fine librarian and a dedicated dedicated board yeah um, I submitted our document to you. Yeah. Here. Oh, it's like a spreadsheet. Oh, there it is. Page six. Can I check? On the back. At this point, we level funded everything that we could. There were a couple of things that we had to increase a little bit. Um, as I, I just have to say that Jen is doing a terrific job for you guys. She made this has been a big year for us because we transitioned from our own checkbook to the Numeric system, and she was absolutely pivotal in that and so helpful particularly to me to make that happen. Um, and as I mentioned to Jen, the note I gave to Jen, that the payroll figure is just a substitute figure until the board decides what is gonna happen with all the town employees in you know, early December or early January, whenever you do that in the future. But other than that, uh, it's reflecting about a 2% increase at this point. The majority of your increase being payroll? And it will be after, when it's determined what that uh, COLA figure is in January. Right. I was looking at the water. And I'm, you have you have the same experience with the water, too, I'm sure, like getting the tax from the village. Mm -hmm. Yes, we, we have not We have not um, budgeted for that in the past. And so we figured we better do it because it's, it's got to be paid. And we will be billed for it. So that's one of the places. That, well, that is uh, by far the biggest yeah. place for sure. All the others are, are little increases where we expect we will need a little bit more money. But the, the water is the big one, unavoidable. As I'm sure you know also. Now we maybe some good conversation. <laughs> I hope so. Okay. Looking at it previously, it was
Oh, anybody have any questions? Anything sort of outstanding you need to tell us or besides good things that you're doing? Anybody on the board have any thing to say? I think we're good. I think. Okay. Jim, any major capital projects in the next few years? The next few years. Um, there are some things that we're interested in doing that we would use our reserve for, but it's so hard, to, like some masonry and stuff, but it's so hard to find people, the right people to do it and then schedule them. So not not in the next 12 months, I don't think anything would be major. But we're look, always looking in the future to see yeah. who we can find to do the jobs that we think we like to not hand So if you get lucky with a contractor, it might yeah, yeah. do something. Exact, exactly. <laughs> But it's upside down world. Yeah, no, nothing major <laughs> that's eminent. Okay. Or no. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. 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 <laughs> for sure. It's good to get the sewer done though. But that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was that was important. That was for a big sure. Pain for Amy. Yeah. That's for sure. Okay. Great. Well, thank, thank you so very much. We appreciate yeah. it. And I, I would just like my board to introduce themselves. So okay. you, please. Melia, you have turn. The Ryan Ray. And Sonny Ryan. Sonny Kirbles. Melanie Dickinson. Kim Austin Julio. I'm not sure. And that's your library board, and we thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Could you go around and just say your names? There are several of you. I don't think it's the same word. Wow. Nice to hear your name. Yeah. Mark Jeske, interim town administrator. Justin Mason, board clerk and assessor. Yeah, this is the, this is the important guy right here. This is Susan Bartlett, chair of the board. Savannah Drummond. Roland Wolvey. Matt Moore. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. And I say you're. Welcome to stay. All our budgets be this. Uh, okay. Not a big part. Traveling, I believe, was one thing I heard. So, ah, okay. uh, documented report came in yes. and shared with you. I, yep. Actually, I can't remember if there was, and I think it was a level budget. Proposal they had 3,000 something current budget. Yeah. FY24 was the first time they were allocated funding. And I think the last time I talked to Mary, she was level funding for 25. Did you know staff packet? Yeah, I don't mention it. I don't remember reading those and I don't remember. Anyway, she told me that anyway. So okay. whatever whatever the twenty four was, third three thousand or thirty five hundred, she was going to maintain. Okay, buying parts and pieces and testing and doing some good public outreach and trying to rattle the state cages to get them to pay more attention, but not 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 too much avail. Right, right, and it's a then we'll put on something, but it's a good report. She did it's nice, and obviously the. Uh, the goats were an interesting experiment and they apparently worked pretty well. They've learned some more about fencing goats <laughs> and the amount of area if you really want them to clean. But if she said, if you read it, a couple of other folks in Hyde Park that have goats did their own experiments with fencing in the goats. And they are very effective at, at uh, chewing it right down. Okay. Oh, boy, I like the purpose. Oh, there, I just want to mention, found Mary's email. So we are thinking of hiring someone to do brush cutting at a couple of sites and thinking about locating a couple interns for the summer that would need to get paid. Otherwise, level funding. It's that comes out of the level funding. <laughs> Okay, level funding, knowing that they got some thoughts on how they want to spend it. 
Okay. We got the loyal fiber net. <laughs> And this lady hiding back here, and I'm going, and? <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> Although Michael is on his way. Okay. <laughs> okay, if he's coming, all right. Yes. Then how about if he's. We have Lori and Mark who we just joined. <laughs> okay. Let's assume right there. I don't know what happened in that book to make it. Give it a second. Okay. Keep my agenda. Okay. Ron, you got us for um overview of highway. Yeah, overview of highway. So highway department, I mean when you talk about highway, which is the largest department at over a million dollars uh, plus in addition that operating cost is another half a million in the capital reserve. <laughs> It's almost 50% of all your expenses are rolled up in roads. And Mark's been um, pretty good at hitting his budget, except for priority shifts. And there, there, we talk about this all the time. Uh, you guys talked about last year, for example, when the uh, Brian equipment needed yeah. to be replaced. You're like, can you save in salt? And then, you know, so that's the shifting kind of thing. So no matter what's in the Highway budget, the select board always has that ability to move things around as long as you don't go over that total uh, voter approved amount. For next year, a, a couple of things happen every year. One of the things that we do is we'll swap uh, culverts and crushing. So they, the about $40,000 switches from no purchasing of culverts. And that 40000 that was in the year for culverts is pushed to crushing. So the next year, crushing is zero and culverts are 40. We're also thinking about changing uh, line striping and roadside brush cutting the same way. So it'd be zero brush cutting in one year because Mark has finished his reach out that he was doing for five or six years trying to get to edge right away where he needed to. And now we're into maintenance of those saplings and things. This is not roadside mowing the first four or five feet. This is the reaching out and grabbing the full right away where he needs to. And line striping, we found people want to come out for ten thousand or twelve thousand dollar contracts, and we have a harder time scheduling for five and six thousand dollar contracts. It's about six thousand a year if you want to do all the double yellow. We don't have much of the fog light, you know, lining except for the village. So if we take the six thousand, six thousand for line striping and merge it into one contract, the twelve is the same amount that we need every couple of years for the brush cutting and hazard tree removal. So we do the same thing. We don't have a they're small budgets, so they're not enough to do it efficiently spread out. So we combine it and skip here. So that's those are that second one is new. The brush cutting and line striping is new as an alternate. We try to do it a little bit every year, like do half the line striping. And the guys are like, seriously, you're gonna make us come up to Hyde Park for five thousand dollars. So and we tried to merge with Morristown, and its coordination of the towns was difficult as well. So you really have to have something that's just interesting enough to get them here for what they would call a small project, but they weren't coming on a tiny project. State state don't do no more of that for you. Uh, they they only do class twos still. They don't do the double uh, yellow, yellow on uh, threes. So we have to co cover that. It's about 6000 a year if you did every year. And you don't need to do it every year. <laughs> Some, you know, like I think we talked about last time, depending on the road and the curvature, you could lose the double yellow in one year, but it kind of stays for more than one year, unless you really 
have a new pavement or something like that where it may not stick. You have to get a kind of a base paint down first. So Mark's trying to figure that out. That's not ideal. The the the, the line striping, we do it by uh, crew. The crew does the village. We contract outside the village for the double yellow. We, it, it's not, it's, again, it's the same thing. It's not enough money for us to buy our own equipment either. <laughs> so we're kind of stuck in that small project mode of contracting out those things. The rest of the budget, uh, except for paving, which is a big, bigger issue, because uh, it's behind right now, uh, is what, what do you want to do about paving? So we're definitely behind on funding. Annual funding has been reduced for cost savings overall. So you've depleted what originally five years ago, we had a goal of 300,000 a year to keep up with like a generally speaking, because not every road's the same, but let's say it's a 12 year cycle to repave with three inches or three, four inches, just to maintain that wearing surface. Some roads go longer, village streets have gone for 30 years, some of them, you know, but, and then other roads, uh, center road might be in the 10 year range. But anyway, we, whatever that range is, it's not enough at 215,000. Uh, let's see, this year is, um, so generally tonight, that's what we're talking about is, um, what do we want to do? The recommendation, yeah, 215,000 for this year is to try to get to that 300,000, that it, it, but we're losing every year. We don't do that. We lose like 6% inflation. So the mileage goes down because the money goes up and you're never really getting on that ideal schedule. So Mark is right now in emergency mode in the sense of paving the worst roads first. He's not ahead of it. Right. So we're losing there. <laughs> Centerville Road from uh, North High Park Road to the village. Uh, you know, he's gonna have trouble plowing that this year. He may be almost run out of time to even do patch paving. So it'll be one of those pothole brigades, you know, all winter, depending on the rain that we get, or if it gets above 50 degrees, all those weather things that make it worse. Not an ideal situation to be in. He also, uh, I don't believe he got to the culverts, either cross culverts are usually done first as a best practice. I don't think he got to those this year, as I know. Uh, so Ideally, what happens is first thing in the screen gets out there, does the culverts, lets the pavement hit, you know, get hit a little bit, and then we can pave Centerville Road with the 215,000. The request has come in to do more paving, uh, most recently up at Centerville, the gravel section between Center Road and Mead Road, almost near North High Park Road. It's, it's a 0.9 miles stretch. And that would be additional mileage to roll into that 12 year cycle or the 300,000. Mark's suggestions are, you know, if you add, add paved roads, take away some paved roads, you know, <laughs> net zero, who okay? cares? You know, we have to, the, the money's limited anyway. So the more mileage you add, the worse it's gonna be, but don't make it worse, you know, take away a point. I, I'll say, you know, that's simple explanation, but, or you can add more money to the budget and get that, you know, get that closer to 300,000, keep up the regular schedule. Um, and it, it's just, it's what happens next on Centerville, you end up with a reclaim, you know, you're, you're going to end up reclaiming and, and doing all those extra costs if you don't keep that top coat nice. So that further takes away from your your, your <laughs> lot budget. So the more work you have to do, the longer the cycle gets. It's just a it's vicious cycle at some point. Most of the roads are not that bad. You know, it's <laughs> overall, they're not all failing like that section of Centerville, but that Centerville's taken, if you drive it, including North Hyde Park Road, as one of the through roads, you know, to get up to Eden, right? Alternate routes. Um, piecemeal, <laughs> part of Centerville, part of North Hyde Park Road, Ferry, Ferry Street, you know, piecemeal kind of thing, because the whole thing's $10 million. So you don't do it in not quite 10 million, but way over what we have at $200,000 and, you know, 100,000 uh, half mile or whatever it costs these days. Mm -hmm. 
So we got problems with paving. It's always been a problem. It's mostly due to the, the fact that we have a lot of paved roads and the, and the paving budget has never, ever ex met the minimum requirement. And some of that relates back to customer satisfaction, you know, potholes, slower traffic. Some people like that. Some people don't like the pop tires, you know, all those things that come with a poorly maintained paved road. So you, you don't really save anything. You're deferring those costs to drivers. You're deferring it to car repairs, whatever. Um, so it's something you can't avoid. Changing a paved road to a gravel road has its own problems too, because maintenance costs on a high volume gravel road are higher than a paved road. So if you get six or 800 trips a day on a gravel road, your maintenance start, starts to go up because there's so much traffic. Uh, under 800 trips a day is probably in that marginal zone. Certainly if you have, if you had 100 trips a day on a paved road, I, it shouldn't be paved. You know, Mark was looking at a little stretch on Heath Road. It's like six, 700 feet long. Doesn't really need to be paved. Nowhere near 0.9 miles, but it's 700 feet. Um, and that has very limited, you know, maybe 10 houses past the paved section. Hard, hard, to, you know, the rest of the budget, you're going to have your wage issues and salary with adding the new person and union contract stuff that's all going to impact wages. So those are, it's pre premature, but not a small issue. Right. Out of everything else in the budget, right. with those, issue. with those on off schedules and trying to work the budget that way without having a huge net increase, you're, you're, you have that, I don't call it the elephant in the room type thing, but it's, I, I really don't know. Some, pe some people, some towns like uh, Hyde Park take out a bond to try to do a whole bunch at once. It doesn't really get you that much farther because you had to pay interest on that and we end up having a very short window of the loan, but that road's done. Right. It's Centerville Road. Would you do that for all of Centerville, North Hyde Park Road? Not, not recommended. It's it's way better to get that annual paving dollar where it needs to be for the plan that you have for keeping roads in good condition and without risking that total reclaim, rebuild phase of a, of a road. It, well, the additional, as you already mentioned, the, the increase in the cost of everything that Miners do was astronomical. We were looking at the, the rate of increase in the cost of paving a, a mile, you know, mm -hmm. and it's you have had I did, but it's stunning. I don't, you know, we um if it put as a cost for the mile road of pavement it used to be a hundred thousand years ago. Depends on who's been on that. Yeah. How about to do it well? And the, <laughs> you know, the depth matters a lot. You can get away with some right. shim coating, but it's going to get you five years instead. It also depends if you're going like a 58 28 mix or a 70 28, which is your temperature ranges for your pavement. And you're, if you're specking like a super paved or stony stuff, if you want to go with a type two, three, or four, we, we do it all by the time of work. So, and bulk tonnage, it can be as cheap as 100 a ton. It can be as expensive as two fifty. Yeah. 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 We don't. We don't go. They're too high. We usually get for eighty five a ton. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't have the add on. You could go to the guy that mixes the pavements cheaper. You're right. You got to buy it. <laughs> That's when we buy it. <laughs> That's fifteen bucks or something. Yeah. Yeah. So no no more discussion than that. It's yeah. Mark's going to be back for the next meeting and we'll pick it up with him. Right. Something to mention to Mark between now and then. I mean, the other thing we got to start balancing is we've been talking about our capital budget for replacement of his trucks. I mean, we know there's a shortfall there. You know, we know the or reducing the years. Yeah, we know, I mean, we know combination. Yeah, of that. we know right. the truck just went almost forty percent on the increase of purchase of them. Right. So we got to start balancing that in there. And the trade drop. The happy balance is, you know. And the trade drop. Yeah. So so you got both ends going the wrong way. We can't afford a multiple increase on both options, but you got to start looking at what we do to balance. Yeah. I mean, right, right now, we've got 200000 for a um, capital reserve appropriation. For truck. And I think that works up until the time you buy a greater. <laughs> so the, the greater estimate is 440000 and we might get a hundred thousand back on that. 
on the 150, maybe if we're lucky on the current grader. So you're still talking 300,000 plus or minus for money we don't have with all the new trucks and things that just keep coming around. One thing for you all, I mean, you you all being the board and Mark and the new town administrator really is in having a cap on the number of units. We, you know, since I've been in Hyde Park, we've added unit here. We kept one truck. We didn't trade it. We, you know, you got to have a, I think Mark told me last year that he was getting to be where he think he, he has all the capital equipment that he needs. So that's, that's where you're, what you're saying is your replacement cost doesn't go away. It adds yeah. added to every time you right. keep something and try to repurpose it. Because that repurpose thing all of a sudden becomes a brand new item you need. Right. Down the road. A non-trade in and then a non in a Yeah. So just, I mean, just be careful. You know, if, if we get the capital appropriation at 200,000 and it's almost good or 250 somewhere in there every year and it's replacing all this stuff, don't keep adding new equipment, new equipment to it because it's, it's, it's not going to get any cheaper. And we only have so many roads. That's another issue. If you don't accept any new roads, you stabilize your costume. Uh, we had a request from uh, Woodford Drive was one request. The select board said no off Jones Road. We just got a new request for Levesque Drive that uh, those folks have all the guidelines and the policy now. They have to go through the same thing that all these mountain mountain estates asked last uh, spring to add that loop road to. They got the same. It's not cheap to convert private to public, but it also defers a lot of future costs to other taxpayers when you have to determine it's in the public good before you say, yeah, bring on that extra mile of paved road. We don't have enough money to pay for what we got now. So, but they're asking for the practical reason mm -hmm. that they're sure. paying taxes and they don't get the public road service. They have public road service at the intersection of their private road. They, you know, they don't see that. They want to see the plow going around the circle or up the steep hill on the back or whatever. Uh, I'm very, very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, all that stuff is uh, gets on the highway budget. All those things yeah. we just talked about. Yeah. As the main driver of the whole budget. Right. Yeah. Right. Because that it really is. So that's all just introductory to that with more wages and Winter budgets due by or January, right? So commit committees. You have to vote the last week of January, plus or minus. All the committees have to be in here both by January. Uh, oh, hopefully by Christmas you'll we'll have a complete Christmas, budget. Yeah, yeah Christmas. Then we have time to sort of work with it and figure out what we need to do. Yeah, yeah, that's the goal: is get everything in by Christmas break and then come back and figure it out. Okay. They don't really have to get really depressed until after Christmas. Perfect. <laughs> That's why we plan. It's it, the though. preparation. Yeah, we won't be though. I gotta. There's a committee. I gotta get a caboose going on. <laughs> yeah, we won't do a tax rate projection until after the new year. <laughs> yeah, we've got because the the um, well, I know Jen is getting all the fire department stuff organized. Okay. On that cheery note, how about we make a fire? Where is he? Is he on his way? Oh, just kidding. <laughs> He's coming out of Johnson. <laughs> uh, okay. So Michael Ray is the town rep, and it, when he shows up, he can give more information, but way better than I can. But basically, I know of no request from Lamoille Fiber for town funding coming up. No rate charge, no support, no... I think Johnson might have, might have ordered 50000 I think for some grant match, but I don't recall Hyde Park from doing that kind of a ARPA allocation. Okay. Right. So he didn't ARPA, didn't he? I don't know. Johnson did. Did he pay sure? Yeah, we did. did. That's 40,000, right? That's 25% right. of something, right? <laughs> yeah, I remember what the number was. It wasn't 50, but it was no, less. Well, yeah. Okay. So anyway, whatever, whatever that is, I think that's done, but they are having good in field construction stuff happening finally with consolidated communications who took on the 
the vendor role to lay the lines. Sort of makes sense that they own all the telephone poles anyway. That's like 1940s all over again. Run the wire. Repeat. Um, How about this? Then we'll do the Centerville Road and Book Road culvert updates and change orders to the grid. Broken record on ledge. We had uh, got clear Centerville Road. They moved over to Brook Road on the inlet side hit some ledge and it's not ledge in the road or anything you could see it's like in the ditch where they started to dig in for the head wall and the culvert inlet side same thing there's just a, a minor amount on the inlet side that got hit with ledge obstruction that had to be uh, taken out taken out put the pipe in got into the outlet end and found another round of ledge that was also there that one, I almost, I almost think the engineer should have seen because when, when you're up there or before construction, you could look at the outlet side and the water comes out of the old pipe and it hits trees and ledge. You could just see it. And I don't know if somebody didn't take a measure to run the new pipe and just see how far the new pipe was actually going to be. But you, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the engineer to figure out why that didn't get get put on the plan but you know it, it didn't get put on the plan so the contract was bid without alleging encumbrance basically and when they found out that it had to be chipped away because of the timing they, they are doing really good on time though once one thing about this whole project it took forever to get started but once they started it's it's been going really well so change order two and three are in there um Adjusting the total price of the project from seven hundred forty thousand to seven sixty six nine sixty five. Yeah, change order two or nine change order three. Yeah, seven six 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 yeah, nine six five. Um, all this stuff gets reported to FEMA, and we have engineering reports and the sketch. What's their warranty on it? We remember that contract. We have a year warranty on it. I only ask because Center Road's got a wicked dip in it now, and I'd like to, I'd like to, one of us reach out to Ron and ask Ron to revisit. We do, we do have a uh, negotiation of sorts going on with the contract. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not done yet. Right. <laughs> Everybody's aware. Mark's measured it. Ron's measured it. Engineers inspected it. There's a problem. Some of it's an interpretation problem of the design, which we don't quite understand from Ron's perspective. Yet. I think it's just straight non compaction settlement. Immediate. That's a, yeah. Immediate, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the person that's changing the emails and the engineering and saying that, I don't need to be an engineer to understand there's a dip. And I'm sure they didn't design it with a dip. <laughs> I can figure that out. Conveniently, when it comes to the tire rods, it normally comes from a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speed dip, not part of the plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So well, it's not conversation. It's, it's documented. Okay. It's it, with a contract, it's got to work its way through the process. Eventually, you guys will be proposed something that you'll accept or not accept. Yeah. Worst case scenario, we elevate it and have Ron come in and explain it. Okay. Hopefully, we'll have a presentation in the end that makes sense to everybody. If it doesn't, you just say no, it's not good enough. We can have a deduct on the project. We are holding 10%. So we'll have 74,000, 76,000 yeah. left over. Uh, not left over, but retained. So. Right. So it's a uh, motion on two and three, I think catches up on that project. I did ask the uh, engineer for update status report. We have uh, permits and compliance and grant conditions that have to be met. So we get to try to hit those deadlines. I'll make the motion to accept the change order two for the budget of 766, whatever. Yeah. Two, two, and two and three. Yeah, two and three. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You must want to see you again. Grab one for the road. No, okay. <laughs> see, see you, Zach. Bye bye. Okay. You second? Second. Okay. I'm more in favor of accepting the change orders two and three change in the total. 
signify by saying I. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Yeah. Team of bio. <laughs> Before the meeting, <laughs> this true story. <laughs> Justin comes and goes, all that paper. <laughs> so FEMA buries you with paper. And I said, I barely looked at those 20 pages. Right. You don't need to print those out for the board. They have yeah, them digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they really want to get into it, they get a big monitor and read every word. Oh. Uh, so they're not in your packet, the paper packet. But anyway, the, the gist of it is that the environmental issues are resolved one way or the other through the state of Vermont or the town or FEMA checking their own records. And that satisfied one of these two documents, which is the REC. The second, the second document that is the acknowledgement document says that the town knows what we're doing. We're going to get involved with this project and we're going to have a public open space at the end of it, that we won't build a library on or do structures. It's going to be flood open space land um, and things like we will not seek federal funding on this property again. So F FEMA's like, get this property off our risk assessment list. We don't want it anymore. You never have to submit any money, you know, any uh, damage reports to us on that property. And then they have you sign off to clear that totally. Town has to check off any permits required for demolition, which is usually a notice with Department of Health on lead removal, you know, just all these environmental things. So there's a big long list in this acknowledgement letter. David Ruse, who's the town attorney, looked at it specifically regarding title issue and timing. He said most of that, uh, most of those items can be resolved. We talked about the uh, squatter, if you will, at Demar's property. And he said the landowner's responsible for clearing that property. So the town can let them know. So I actually called Larry over the weekend. He didn't return my call yet. Uh, the other property is vacant uh, out of the two houses. So the other property is sort of ready to go almost now. The, Larry's property has is not ready to go. But the town attorney wasn't concerned about all that process. So he, he had done these before and he knows that there's a clear title requirement at closing so that we don't have any easements on there. They're the only easement that we think we might have is a easement from the state of Vermont for a stormwater pipe that goes to the river, which they don't even want to do anymore. <laughs> you know, they absolutely do not want to have straight pipes anywhere on their system because everybody's looking at stormwater these days. And so there might be an a agreement there to get rid of the easement if we deal with the stormwater in a different way, that kind of thing. But that discussion has to be had for the title issue. So it's brought back to you because we're at another step of this multi-month, two-year, three-year process. This is a two-house buyout, and a lot of the stuff is actually handled by the town attorney, which is reimbursed through the program, only because it's a legal transaction of land. Once these documents get put in, there's got a final letter comes out from FEMA saying, you've checked all the boxes, we have all the documents, the landowners have signed their voluntary participation form, you've signed the acknowledgement form, everybody's on the same page, let's uh, get final funding approval and do the appraisal. The appraisal starts and goes through and the landowner can bail at any time. There's no commitment to seeing it through. Uh, landowner, because it's voluntary participation, can get out at any time. FEMA will pay until there's, you know, a conclusion either way. So that's that's where we're at. Um, I don't think there's a lot of questions here. This is part of the overall. We had a conceptual Southern Gateway project to look at that whole stretch. So now we have that grant, the North End for the bike bed grant that's looking at Heath Road and post office area. This is coming from the South End to try to get as much attention on that corridor as we can. Are these the brown sites? Yeah. I missed this whole email, so I, I was I'm trying to catch up on the address. Are these addresses the same areas of the brown sites? The brown? Uh, the the DeMars property? Yeah, Larry DeMar is 5187. Yes. The, the, okay. the, church, the church and I property is 5169. Okay. So and you'll see those two numbers on all the documents. Right. So they are the 
contaminated city. So one, well, as far as we know, uh, Damar has the brownfield risk. Yeah. Church, we haven't, other than him parking cars on there, we haven't really figured out if there's any, it's mostly been residential use there. There's chickens in the backyard once, and goats. We and Larry used to park cars over there, but all the activity we think is on his yeah. property. He may have had a car up on the jack or something in the backyard. I think I remember, you know, the engine um, holder uh, frame, like, but that's part of the deal that we have to check those boxes. Regional planning helps with those kind of things with their brownfield money. So at some point, that checklist on the acknowledgement form, you'll start to see those things being checked off yeah. and the closing will happen at some point. Demolition has to happen within 90 days of, of what, you know, all the paperwork gets signed and there's a, a closing and then 90 days is the window you have from the closing to demo and plant grass. Yeah. So FEMA will purchase, the, I'm sorry, I meant totally. Town will, town will purchase. Town will purchase, FEMA will reimburse us. Yeah. For full, full. Uh, this is at ninety. Okay. It wasn't seventy-five in the beginning, but and then the, we are restricted to what we can do with it based on. Can't do that. Perpetual open space. You can have parking lot, yeah, fishing access, park. and storm okay. storm water. They're they're a little iffy on storm water. I haven't quite figured out how far they'll let you go with the storm water. Maybe a swale, but maybe not a, a pumping station kind of thing. Playground stuff like that, right? Passive, you know, removable things. Okay. You know, anything that can. Uh, the main the main goal is we don't want you to improve it and seek damage from us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so a swale wouldn't necessarily be damaged. You might have to go to clean it out. A, a big you know stormwater detention pond with structures, probably not because that could get damaged and removed by high water. I think that's kind of where they're headed with limited light use. Not yeah, I think it's just we can we can turn it into a nice green space, handy parking. But you know, yeah, it could be a, you know the the other project up north is River Shore and Heath Road sidewalk or shoulder kind of design. So the parking for that southern end could be this parking area yeah. here to get on that River Shore path to the post office, that kind of thing. But. Those are well, that's that scoping study just starting, so that that'll become clearer down the road. But yeah, after I think after funding, it's eighteen months is what their estimate is. So it's, even though we've been into it for eighteen months, getting to getting close to the final application, all these things checked off, eighteen months is what they project to go forward. For the time you have grass planted. So what is their action on the site? What, what what do we need? We just need to authorize me to sign the acknowledgement of the program requirements. Which is everything we just talked about. Okay. And, That's and more, by the way. Oh, like pages and pages more. And I, yeah, I was gonna say I apologize because I just went through the emails and somehow I and I still haven't I couldn't write yeah, it. So yeah, I, this, I, this thing is a good thing to put my bed to fall asleep. Yeah. Now if we run into ending any of the remains, our effects stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's right. Then you yeah. remain stop. <laughs> a bunch of things go stop. Yeah. So move. Yeah. So move. <laughs> Need a second. <laughs> okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Now, now we're we ready for five minutes. Michael's here. <laughs> hi there. Come on up and join us. <laughs> That I joined you before. <laughs> well, we just set this in and just in and and appreciate what detailed report. This, it doesn't appear as though we're in, in terms of budgeting, we need to do anything to budgeting. But if you would just sort of give us everybody a quick update on how things are going and what it looks like, that'd be great. Okay. I can try. I didn't realize I was going to do that. Hang on. <laughs> um, so if you go back, how many years? About five years? Five at least. Yeah. It feels like it. Yeah. He started this fiber committee yep. and we've gone along and uh, Ball County Planning Commission got involved quite heavily with, with Leah Kavoga until um, she couldn't do it anymore. And um, we've got 
eight different towns involved now. It started with just us. And now, but two years ago, we looked very close to making a deal with a little known company out in the uh, California world. And uh, they, uh, they, couldn't, they couldn't live with Vermont basically at the end of the day. But we did make a, a, a good deal. I think probably a much better deal with um, Vidium, which is a subsidiary of um, Consolidated Communications. And that is going to, to result, notice I got my fingers crossed, with um, actually getting fiber installed to houses next year. Maybe, maybe partly this year, but we should get all what are federally defined as underserved and not served, unserved and underserved. And underserved means less than 25 megabits download, uh, three megabits up down, and uh, <laughs> means they don't have anything. But all E911 addresses will get served that are in those categories. And that should that should then go on in 2025 to us getting the rest of the town, you know, the rest of the population served. Okay. And hopefully we don't get too much inflation and we don't need to get more federal money than we've got now. Um, can't tell you about that. Yeah, yeah. Who knows what happens with that? Yeah. But it's because it's always when you when you watch the news, they're they're always throwing around such gigantic sums of money, yes. you know. And then it's realized having just talked about paving, paving is cheap compared to this. Um, but how expensive it is to get access to folks is. Uh, well, you remember when rural electrification hit, and I think we're getting fiber faster than electricity finally got. To some parts of NEK, whether in 1956 or something. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, I remember that. You remember that. My mom, I don't remember. A lot older than he looks. You have to be. But, you know, if with a little bit of prayer in there, I think it looks pretty damn good. Okay. And the big reason that we went with the uh, video is that we won't have to negotiate for every blankety blank pole to put fiber on. So it'll just because they already have the poles. Okay. Right. And okay. that's a big deal. That'll save a lot of time. And they already have all the equipment in terms of people that can do the work and uh, people that can get up on trucks and, and install it. So we should we should have a pretty easy time of it. And it'll be some semblance of affordable? It is supposed to be very affordable. Okay. That's one of my hot buttons mm -hmm. is that we keep it affordable. Yeah. And you know, if you go look at Fidium's pricing today, it's uh, for, for better than that I've got today, anyway. Um, it, you know, it's uh, thirty-two dollars and sixty-seven cents a month, which I think is pretty affordable. Yeah. Don't quote yeah, me also. No, the cents, but uh, mm -hmm. the dollars is about right. It's quite a. It's going to be quite significant for people that went from nothing. <laughs> I mean. Look at her. Her mother is in Braintree, and she went from nothing to fiber because of EC fiber down in that part of the state. And it was just like turning a switch. It was unbelievable. No cell service. Yeah, <laughs> the only cell service she's got now is over the over fiber because you can do yeah. that, huh. and yeah. and it will bring fiber. Oh, sorry, it'll bring cell phone service to wherever there is fiber 
which is something that people don't think about, but it's just part of the deal. Because once you get on the internet, then you can have uh, your cell phone service coming through it without changing a thing. You just have to change some settings on your phone. But other than that, you're not paying Verizon or at and or whoever anything extra. And you're not paying whoever delivers your fiber anything extra either. It's just part of the internet. So it's pretty good. Yes. Any questions? Ooh. Don't know what to ask. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't go too. I don't watch that. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Uh, I, yeah. I mean, I, I just go back to the days when we were sitting there, were, yeah. and I, I almost couldn't believe we got to hear. Oh, you were so frustrated from day one; it wasn't happening. So it was a long wait for you. <laughs> well, it was a lot of. There was a lot of hope that went down the toilet when, when the first the first people in yeah. California yeah yeah just couldn't the problems with big companies yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well first thank you for hanging in there because oh. it, it it has it was taken I'm sure not just here but all over the state folks like yourselves that are determined to have this happen Carol Fano too yeah. Carol yeah. Carol has been there every step of the way yeah. And she and I have been pushing. Jack Wool was until uh, about a year ago. He couldn't do it anymore. Right. But uh, he did it for a long time, too. Yeah. So the three of us. Yeah. And anyway. yeah. <laughs> I lost you guys and you took it from there. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Oh, that's good. Thank you for putting up with us. It's a pretty painless, Mike. At least you know where I am, so you can, you know, if something goes wrong. <laughs> I know, you, you missed the paved road discussion earlier. Well, I found the minutes, and we did obligate 25000 <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Should have been 50 but... <laughs> Hey, there you go. That's the discussion I remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was a no on the 50, and that's what I was doing. That's what the others remember. Is there opportunity for public comment on the paving of Senator Road? Well, always. <laughs> I'm sure, like, it looks like Mark Lori is gone, but I think she wanted to add her two cents also. But I am vehemently opposed to paving that 0.9 miles of Centerville Road, or at least between me Road the top of the hill, <laughs> okay. or Mark, uh, Lori's house, is because of the speed the people, it's incredible how fast people travel on that dirt. You know, and even going uphill, it's like, would you even got, would you guys even cons concerned about how much gas you're wasting going up that hill? Um, and the only thing that slows it down is the fact that it's dirt. That we got, you know, it's dirt. We got mud season. Right. We got, you know, there's. Fortunately, or, well, I think it's fortunately, there's uh, a frost heave right in front of that, no. that old gray house that's so close to the road. And, you know, and there's no way to control the speed once you pave it. She's opposed to it, not in favor. We hear about that stretch of road. Yeah, people are opposed to it, people are in favor of it. Yeah. And the problem is that you know you can't you sort of can't stop the speed anyway, and it's certainly a lot easier to drive on and a lot uh, easier to plow and things like that. But well, it's easier to plow until the paving gets really bad, and then it's not. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, it, and it gets worse than it does with dirt roads because Mark's really good about getting dirt roads done. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and Anita, if you'll please give us your name so we'll get you in the record. Oh, Susan Dorn. For the record. For the record, right. You want my address? <laughs> Somewhere in center. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> we got a pretty good idea with this. <laughs> That's your problem, I do. Okay. <laughs> 
pick up my number. <laughs> so you two come to an agreement, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> there is no agreeing on this. There are good and bad points. So I think speed is the, the worst point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, in a, in a town perspective, is that we already can't afford to take care of what we have paid. Mm -hmm. So paving additional. Oh. Puts us further in the hole. Yeah. Well, so. well, I know Lori and my crew is very, very interested in having it hey. paid. Uh, I don't really know why, because she hates me. There's, there's something, something going on, but I don't yeah. know why. Well, let's see if you see it, because she did go. I didn't realize she didn't, I didn't get an indication that what she wanted to say, but if you see her, tell her to just. And she can just drop us an email too if she wants. If she's ever happy to have it, just there. Are, there is a section like in front of Lori's house. Um, there's that it's always little potholes. Um, well, I think it's right next to Lori's house. Um, no, just a, um, it, there seems to be a driveway, a, a mailbox right there. I don't, I don't know if it's the mail carrier that you know the stop and starting that causes all these little potholes. It's like there's no place else. Except for on the top, the crest of this little hill, where there's a, a mailbox, and it's like it's full of old apple. It's really odd. Very you, know, you, know, you know what causes that stuff, Lily? Really? Washboarding. Yeah. But it's at the crest of the hill. Yeah. <clears throat> you're putting a gas nail to get up the hill. Right. And they're trying to work on it so your trucks start chattering. Yeah. But no, this is not on the uphill. It's right at the crest. So you're you're taking your foot off the accelerator at that point. Well, you think they are. <laughs> 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 to the speed issue. <laughs> that's that's pretty much what causes it fobbles. You're on the gas, you're off the gas, you're on the gas, you're off the gas. You notice when they go from the black top. To the dirt. Mm -hmm. Notice yeah, that. <laughs> so could that be why around mailboxes? You could, it could you be. Could as she said the mail lady or the mailman yeah. or whatever. They're always in a hurry. The next thing they do is they think we're going to the next mailbox and they. <laughs> and I was wondering if something day could be day. done. This girl, that little spot. Black dog. <laughs> just right here, it's fine. <laughs> it's just got like the extension on your driveway. <laughs> no, it's, it's just. And then, of course, when they chloride the road, they don't chloride way over to the edge. You know, nobody it's does. Looser. Uh, it becomes looser. Right. <clears throat> in the summertime, that's that's kind of not packed down as good as the center is. Mm. And you've got water that runs down the edge of the road if you've got a berm on it. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Speed's been a heavy conversation on their road, for the record. Yeah. Oh. Speed has been a oh, oh, yeah. Everybody seems to be in a hurry to get someplace. <clears throat> there are there. You, would, you would think a lot of people would come down that way, though, would you? I mean, why would they travel that way when they go down the center road? That's all blacktop. No, but they don't go down. Look, by the time they get to our house, they have a very short distance, so they get to our top anyway. Yeah. Okay, so... It's only a mile from roughly a mile from Center Road down to where the blacktop starts at. I guess it starts at Bead Road or it stops at Bead Road. So between those spots, it's only about a mile. She was mad when she was measuring for the blacktop. <laughs> or, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Got it. Next. 
agenda item, animal control and kennel update. You're going to become our expert on this one. <laughs> yeah. That's exciting. Sounds like a lot of work. We have a meeting um, December 18th, it's not Monday, um, to meet with the towns and discuss what, just, just starting the conversation about what the plan is in the future. It sounded like we were putting a unit up. Oh, yeah, this is like, yeah, that's the one term. in the short term. term one. Yeah. In the short term, saying we're putting that's going up when? Allie told me last week that they were checking electric, but I haven't heard her update on how that went or if it's totally like not able to be powered up, that kind of thing. Uh, as far as I know, the Chin and Humane Society has offered like emergency one off if we have room type service. So that's our backup backup. There's no local backup, which was preferred. So the Chin and Humane Society has offered that much. Uh, Johnson still hasn't solved it. I think their ACOs are still housing animals. That's the, I don't know. Sometimes that's the best, the worst type thing because you're expecting a lot from your ACOs to take wild animals in, you know, that aren't trained. You don't know anything about them. And, you know, but so, so far that's worked out okay. So, yes, it's. Which towns are you meeting with on the 18th? Oh uh, well, it's been invited to like all the surrounding towns, but nobody's responded yes or no. So was like everyone in the Morrow County. Um, I gotta check my list. It's like Waterville, Eden, um, Johnson, yeah, yeah, Cambridge, yeah, and then we'll get services. So not all just the Morrow County. Snow, snow, no. I think that it's snow to that. Yeah, because they said they had their situation right. in care of. I just want to wonder if they wanted some more. Well, I think as we explore it, we'll see. Yeah, I think it could be a yeah. really long yeah. project. So this is the yeah. first, and then we'll invite more if we need them, want them, they have interests, whatever. Um, with 18 friends, I think. So that stays on the item, right? Just stays. Okay. Yep. Oh, speed limits. You missed one. Mm -hmm. What? Got administrative time? search. Depressing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. On to the like, on to the next. <laughs> depressing for Ron too. Said depressing. <laughs> You have you have interviewed some. Sounded like maybe one dropped out. Several several people dropped out. Um, dropped out after the interviews or dropped out before mm -hmm. interviews. All services were getting into it, and of course, it's no surprise it was the better qualified folks who were job searching. And um, like the you know reality we will run into is you cannot you can't compete financially with bigger communities and private industry. So you can't take blame people for taking a much higher paying job. We're well, just like, okay. Um, and there's a lot that are available right now. Well, of, of all sorts of things, right? So um, we're doing we the 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 pro the process we set up was people that sort of oh you know this is interesting and we do and of course every everybody is from away. So we um we just sort of do a half hour Zoom informal um, talk to each other, sort of get to meet each other, some obvious questions, you know, and then when we get through that, are people still interested? And today's Tuesday, Wednesday. When tomorrow we're doing uh, a more formal, in-depth interview with two of the candidates. Um who are interesting, who are, I would say, almost polar opposites. <laughs> you know, they're just a very different personality. It's very different, you know. Um, and, and we'll see what what uh, what happens with that. There was a, another applicant just came in. 
Um, All over the country. Yeah, really was. Um, and Crazy. and my, uh, I get in trouble if I say what my initial thoughts are looking at. Yeah, they're probably all watching if they're interested. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, Wait, yeah, we're doing these in uh, sort of like normal personnel, executive type meetings. Correct. This is a public meeting, so. But the, uh, well, we just had somebody, um, somebody who's got a, uh, and uh, one of the other people we're talking to with a lot of experience, but in but in big cities and with, and with big business. Um, and this fellow has just applied and looked at and was him a do our, do our, you know, sort of half an hour with him kind of a thing. But all of his experience in his life is in Texas. And you go, whoo, that'd be a heck of a change in roads, wouldn't it? And he's worked for, I haven't had a chance to look up the size of the cities that he's worked in this. And he has been a, a, a town manager, of course, but it's, you have to check the states because some place a town administrator, town manager, are the same thing. They're very different things here. So just have to see what that, you know, what that experience is. But somebody that's used to being in charge of making all the decisions, backing down to somebody who has to deal with a cranky board. Could, could be a hard transition for somebody, but we'll look at him and give him a see if he see if he wants to wants to have our first initial chat. Anyway, what happens? We may be higher than you, so watch out. I don't know why. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yet. <laughs> <laughs> Who said you have to apply? Again? That's how I ended up here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you want to apply, you can definitely come shoot that bucket. This <laughs> <laughs> is all yours. <laughs> um, speed limits. Still waiting for the regional planning. They finished Centerville Road and the plow took up the took up <laughs> the the hoses, but we got we got we got an update on that Centerville dirt section that people okay. wanted to look at. So that can be added as a Traffic study road, uh, finished uh, Cricket Hill, Battle Row. Alec Jones is pulling together his, he's going to download the data and spit it out through his software program. But as soon as we get that, we can turn it around into the study that goes in with your adoption of those changes. Chris, you'll be making decisions on five miles per hour, slower, faster, or no change kind of thing based on, based on that 85th percentile number. I um, might be ready by next fall. What's that? <laughs> I oh. said it might be ready by next fall. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, it, yeah, because I think he definitely had to pull those in and you know, get that data last week. We had snow on Wednesday, I think, just enough to pull it. So he, he should have time to spit those out pretty soon and email them over. Yeah, well, let's see what it looks like. So, they did Centerville Road and there's two more that they need to do right this yeah, season. To write up the reports is Cricket Hill and Battle Run. So the data's been done, but just not the not the report. Report report that I need. Okay. North High Park wastewater. <laughs> That is oh that's because <clears throat> is it new, new number ten you're right. doing? Right. This is another one. So probably a year ago now. <laughs> yeah, so long these projects. Every time you have to talk about it, you go give a little synopsis of the history. About a year ago, the town decided to two yeah, probably two years ago, the town decided to put focus on North High Park. Planning Commission and the Select Board at the beginning of 2022 said that's going to be our work plans, which precipitated into a series of grant applications, all of them been approved, and now we're getting into the implementation. So the time is really part of all of this process. This one in particular, the grant award was $60,000. And it's a scoping study for North Hyde Park 
decentralized wastewater facility to serve the 740 acres is the beginning scoping study. And that includes all of up to the Jones farm, up to the corner of Eden and Johnson for the uh, ranges for the gardens, <laughs> down to 100C and Foss Drive, you know, the little side road there, if you're familiar with that kind of a chunk of land. It's a little bit beyond North Hyde Park zoning because there's really no boundaries to North Hyde Park, but there is a zoning district. This goes just to the outside of that area. What the consultant will do is they'll zero in that area, uh, ideally matching it up with the water system's future growth. Roger Audet and the Prudential Committee said that it has plenty of growth potential for the public water up there. So right now it's like 90 connections and 275 people. So ideally the sewer would mirror that service area, but they could also add a couple of extensions east to Jones Road area, maybe a little bit south to that Foss Road. I think the rain, the guard facility uh, might benefit from public water. I'm not sure what their rules are, but it's not there yet. The administration of that, because it's a long process. I think it took 20 years to get to Westford's bond vote last week that failed. Uh, even though they had $4.2 million in other money and they were just asking for the 400,000 from the taxpayers. And that wasn't even cash. That was a, like, if we needed kind of money, contingency money. So sort of lessons learned in Westford because it's very similar to North Hyde Park. So Seth Jensen Regional Planning were hired uh, out of town through an agreement to push the North Hyde Park project through, except that the, the money was limited. It was a limited amount of uh, project management money. $5,000 was approved by the select board to come from Economic Development Reserve. Knowing that it's a long-term project, uh, the state worked with US EPA and they figured out there was a $15,000 of uh, project money grant that we have to apply for still that is on the agenda tonight so that we could get rid of the 5,000 basically the reserve money, and replace it by this $15,000 grant and have regional planning, however many years it takes. Uh, right. Who knows, it's unknown right now how long it'll take um, to, to shepherd the project through and report back to you folks says things. Who's applying for the grant? You are? Or Susan will sign? For the yeah, grant. Susan needs to be up. I think I think the recommendation was have Susan authorize the sign. Uh, I'll make a motion or for Susan decide. to sign up the grant. Yeah, Susan or Ron. Second. Yeah, Susan can sign. I'll, I'll get, Seth is drafting it and I haven't seen it yet. Right. As long as Susan's authorized. I was happy to spend other people's money. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. And wrong question. Roger, I doubt of what group? North Hyde Park. Fire, Hyde Park Fire District number one. And you mentioned the growth potential that can serve us up to X amount of homes or people um, in? Uh, no, it was the air, the study area is 740 acres of North Hyde Park okay. that could be served by that just a study area. Yeah, okay. likely to be reduced, but start big. Oh. I'm good. For, for number 11, Matt, did you and did you and Mark get together in the woods and design this? Well, we we discussed it a few different times. Um, <laughs> he he had made his re request for who he preferred, mm -hmm. and based on what he dealt with in the past, and I was totally fine with that. And I think it makes the most sense to we deal with most. And then, I mean, I have experience with two of the others, but I didn't have experience with the other ones. But it seemed like the second was two boys. Right, so which one did you guys agree on? It was water management. Hold on, I have to. Ron, do you remember? 
Uh, the only water was Watershed Consulting. Water, watershed Consulting. That was yes. the only water company. Yeah, Watershed Consulting. That's, 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 I'm pretty sure that's who he preferred for the first one. He told me he was reporting back to you, so I'm, I assume he did. Yeah, that's the only, that's the only firm that... Uh, exactly. Right. Yeah, so Watershed he mentioned before he started talking about all the, the RFQ responses that came in. Right. Okay, then sounds like we're safe recommending them and then they're very much double check and mark with the tentative approval of UNESCO and approved. Yeah, I think the next step is a uh, services agreement that you can be authorized to sign. And that basically that sets up a three year services agreement. Right. And then each individual project needs to be. Right. Quoted by them first for our approval. So you're not approving any money tonight as much right. as three year contract. That's who we're gonna work with. And then they'll if we have a specific project, like Mark is interested in the replacement of the culvert on Cleveland Corners at Brook Road. There's a large culvert there, four, four or five footer yeah. that has failed. And it's not related to the flood apparently, but it's something he wants to get done and engineered, things like that. And then we try to roll those yeah, initial, initial things into grants. So the rest of the work is the uh, is trying to get them out this yeah, fall. Big big grants on FEMA. Okay, so many people involved in that thing here. Yeah. Okay. I guess we do a recommendation to do. <clears throat> I'm trying to speak. Educated before I okay <laughs> okay I need a moment to think yeah this is, it is new I mean we've we've gone piecemeal on a lot of this stormwater stuff but it keeps coming up as a need yeah this one covers you from the RFQ process for a lot of grants require you to go through this yeah. the three year contract is would be valid so that they'll be if they can't do the work then we have to go out for oh, it'll be the, the use of watershed consulting associates on a three year term. Okay, we got a second. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor signify by saying good night. Uh, anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. <laughs> what if my car's getting all kinds of attention? Or... <laughs> the the uh, River Shore half. That is a request to have one select board member participate in the select consultant selection. So BTRANS money has their own way of doing things. One of their preferred ways to expedite things is to have towns that receive grants to choose a pre-selected engineering firm from their at the ready list. So we just barely did this for the rail trail yeah. VHB selection. Yeah. Go back to that same list. The committee meets. You have to rank people that are interested in a slightly different project. Yeah. Not much, but a little bit. And then tell VTrans who your selection is. Who was the options? Was there five again? Five, yeah. Uh, I think VHB was on there. Dubois King. EIV. Uh, maybe... But that committee gets into it and it says it's really hard to pick. I mean, these they, they've already been vetted by B Trans. Yeah. They don't really care who you pick, but this they want town buy-in with whoever you might have reasons to pick. Yeah, you might have a preference. And then once B Trans, once the committee makes a recommendation on a firm, then we can get a uh, cost proposal, which also it's really state money. <laughs> So they need to accept that cost proposal before you all sign a contract. So it's a two, kind of a three-step process, I guess. But uh, okay. there's a few people in North High Park that are ready to go, planning commission. Just need one member to kind of hang out and check things. Almost like what you just did. Yeah. Right. Same. It's the same. Yeah. Yeah. One do that too. There's a whole lot of not hanging out coming out of this guy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving for two weeks, but I don't know if I need to be I can't. Well, could one of you guys do it? Doesn't take that much time. 
Yeah. Do we know when this is happening? No, I mean, I, I'm I'm going to Florida too, so we can like do a December get together with these other folks and have just one. Yeah, I'm willing to I'm willing to do it. Someone just tells me when I need to do it. Yeah, or if I can be, be it'll probably be first week of December at this point. Yeah, I, I can do first week of December. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. You want to do it for fun? You're, you're going to send me the five. Yeah. No, that's the, that'll be part of the yeah. agenda. And here's your all things you need to read. Yeah. We just have to show, we have to rank them one through five and send them to be transferred. Okay. Yeah. However, we get there. Okay. Okay. Your local assessor agreement. Um, pretty much good to go on. Right. Um, but it keeps coming up and we keep having conversations and then we're going to sign it and then we have to have another conversation. Is this Sheldon again? Berkshire. 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 And this Berkshire. Is, are, you've been there? I've been there, yep. I went there yesterday and I was there in October. So I'll go there again twice in December, probably off for the month of January and then every other week starting February or January 31st. Yep. There's a three thousand dollar increase to the budget that Ron noted in here on the staff packet. Originally, the assessor budget was twenty four thousand, increasing to twenty seven thousand. Covered benefits, head park share of benefits, I should say. Yeah, yeah sir. This once again authorized me to sign something. Just spending money like a wild woman tonight. <laughs> I'll make the motion that I've heard name sign up. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Okay. Then we got the, uh, let's do the minutes. And then we'll get the, all the stuff that Jennifer wants us to do. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for the last meeting. Uh, 10 Thanks, 10 Second. Was I here? No. no. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> You're here in spirit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor of approving the minutes signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, there's aye. Anybody opposed? No. And one person abstaining. Correct. <laughs> now, there are all the, all the fun financial things that <clears throat> Brian put up. Rising forty five thousand dollars and spending forty four thousand nine hundred twenty eight dollars is getting it pretty close. <laughs> and forty three cents. But did we did we make the wrong motion last time or something? Because she said we this was not appropriately voted on. Well, let's see. We were a with this. We were doing the savings from the salt, which wasn't actually fifteen. Um, it's it, a little convoluted. Yeah, it, it is a little, and and sort of Jan's cut, and the other thirty thousand we decide where it was going to come from. Sort of looking at the budget, it's a year moved along. Yeah. So we actually saved um, eleven thousand is salt, not the fifteen. And and this is where it got. So we didn't. This whole thing got me thinking about how we do this and is there a more efficient way to do it. We, when, part of what we think of is, you know, you get to the end of the year and you look at the books and here's leftover money here and leftover mm -hmm. money there. And if it is used, it just drops into the unallocated money. And if we haven't said we want to use that money 
then we have to ask the voters for permission to use that money and go in. That's not a particularly efficient way to be able to move use your if funds. you see it well right if you get to the end of the year and you see you've got money, you know, to move it around and stay within the budget. It's kind of like our committees to their reserves, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then you take it out and then you come here and you yeah. go, oh, okay, well, let's see. Yeah, I think she was laying she was laying out options like when she said not quite done right. Right. Because nothing happened by June 30th. Right. So you had a, you had a project approval last right. year, but you didn't have any invoices until this current year. So that created a problem because nobody checked J June 30 to say reserve or assign mm -hmm. some of this money. So that was the was the right. error. The error it, right. it wasn't that bad, but it puts you into a position now of using ARPA money instead, which is what the recommendation is. Or if you want to strictly go to the um, how do you, how to get access to the unassigned fund balance, which is where that state winter salt savings right. went, right. those should be pulled out in the next year by the voters, not by the select board. So that's where the town meeting day thing came in. We'd say, let's use forty five thousand from unassigned fund balance. It goes on an article, and people have a floor discussion about it. And we've done that almost every year for, for different projects. That's the typical way. Yeah, but when you think you might have some funds left over and you know you're going to have a project on July 1st, right. July, that's when you really, in June, take a breath and think of those things. If you miss the vote, that's where Jen's going to say, sorry, <laughs> best intentions, but you didn't actually take action on that by the time you had it. So that's what she was pointing out. Yeah. And that's a collective thing amongst everybody, because if you discuss something in March or April and things get busy and you're dealing with 18 new things, Mm -hmm. Justin's really the gatekeeper. I'm trying to remember. Wait a minute. I have a note here. June, remember, remind the board to vote on this because they wanted to. And it, sometimes that can go on any, like, I do that task list with the new, hopefully, a new town administrator will do it where they say, like, you voted this. It, it needs a tickler date in June to remember to do it, actually. To do it. Right. So that's right. one other way to do it other than your board clerk. But anyway, it's fixable now. ARP is available. We have still have over 500,000 left. It's not obligated. So, the clock's sticking on that. We're down to one year left to make your minds up. Yeah. Um, perfectly happy using the ARP money to pay for it. I am as well. Yep. One of those things that saves money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are the few yeah. things that it, actually it, save you money? Yeah, you don't have, yeah, it saves money, and then we're not asking town taxpayers for it. So, yeah, the ARPA funds. Um, okay, but this one first. All in favor of using the, uh, this is the total, uh, $44,920.43. We just sort of run that up. <laughs> May 29th, $30, just that, you know. Uh, you can make, make the bookkeeping easy. <laughs> um, uh, you can just say up to you can say up to forty five to pay the bill. I already go. Oh, yeah. I like that. Okay, so like that. To pay for the for the uh, for the Brian equipment, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? Who made the motion? Second, I did. I will make the motion. <laughs> Pick any name <laughs> you want. <laughs> we um, you know, marks the. The workshop that they did up there was very well attended, and you must see he's showing up all over television and in seven days, and they're doing well. WCA Texas, yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Saw that. and um, and I think the local papers that we do in, in the uh, local towns are are very interested in, uh, in, in doing it. Um, what what uh, we have been doing for uh, Again, because it's a it's an expensive piece of equipment, and, and um, what, one of the issues that came up was why is it because the state is making such large quantities? And why doesn't it just make and sell the the, the, right. the brine to you know the local communities? Because that's what we've been doing with Johnson and Cambridge, mm -hmm. and um, because again, look at it's no it's very it's small really, quantity, it's very small quantity we did with them. Yeah, yeah, but and and again, but we have the capacity to make to make a lot more, and they know they know exactly what the cost is, right? Um, and they've talked to them and say if we're going to do this regularly, then there should be 
some kind of a of a, of an annual fee to start putting to. So when we have to replace equipment or do something, that that builds up. So they were going to talk about that, but everybody's Morris Town is now very interested in it. So so it's. Um, <clears throat> Mark, Mark did call this afternoon. He was uh, invited to speak on across the fence. That's uh, yeah, yeah. UVA Extension Service, and you know they give they give you the script ahead of time. So he was filling in some blanks last minute. <laughs> He's so excited. I said, "You know, they go powder your nose tomorrow morning." <laughs> He's he was. I'm, this is my last one. He said. <laughs> He's so done with live TV interviews. He did this big Brian show up here. He had to get up in front of you know hundred people for that. He's like, you know, totally like he needed the two weeks off, but he squeezed this last thing in tomorrow morning. I don't, he didn't get an air date, but it's, I think it's at lunchtime or something on Channel 3. But it's probably online sooner than yeah. anybody. But, and again, well, he's so done with that, but they, <laughs> um, as as well, it's uh, it's well-deserved the acknowledgement of the good work they did to get us, to bring us the information to do it, and how well they have, they are doing it, and the money that they've saved. You know, and they're very clear in talking to towns about, you know, it isn't, it's, not quite there is an arc to it you do have to sort of you know you know figure it all out but they uh, i think the whole crew is is uh is justifiably pleased at the, the acknowledgement and the, the positive feedback that they are all getting and it's richly deserved they've done, they've done a great job with this and, yeah and state legislature called yesterday a couple of people are talking about what the state can do to accelerate implementation at towns pretty easy so on the grind <laughs> so, you know or again no just say that, that i mean it's on their radar i don't know if that's going to happen in, in january but it's yeah, well, no but it's on their you're right it's on their radar so they have the same thing the state does yeah yeah well much bigger capacity yeah like they just pre what theirs when they're using it so they don't they don't make the grind uh, oh yeah, they do. They're making the brine. Depends on depends on what you yeah. Um, yeah. They're always treating it over here on their sand mm -hmm. on their salt. Yeah, they 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 have. Oh, I mean, depends on what district you're at. Like I know, look in the salt shed over there, state garage. Right, the Eaton one. I'm pretty sure that's brine mixed. That's brine mixed, I think. Yeah, and they so they're to try to they get get a tank right out back. Back. Yeah, yeah, your salt shed in Eaton. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. Looks like a whole new district, but we're going to St. Albans. Four million dollar building. Yeah. Okay. Peace. Yeah. The next item. Oh, over expenditure. The truck. <laughs> we um. Yeah, we can see. We got the taking the packet of the invoices. Um. Got the truck. I spend the money we had it inspected. Not a lot of choice there. But it does leave this budget Ooh, down there. Talking to Mark about these repairs, and they're into the seven year plus weight range, most of most of the twenty and thirty thousand dollar repairs. Um, a lot of that's emissions and electronics and things that have nothing to do with, with the old fashioned plow truck made of steel. Uh, forcing the issue of whether the town leases eventually and just has four year, three year leases on everything and just gets rid of it. We're losing at both ends the purchase price and the trade value. So it used to be better, you know, closer. So that capital reserve that we talked about earlier is gonna is being accelerated and what we should be putting away every year because of this lost value, if you will, in trucks from like dishwasher and washing machine type mentality with heavy equipment. Huh? Yes, we, uh, we gotta watch we, that going forward. Yeah, because. we need to improve the over expenditure. They're, they're, not, they're not outside their budget yet, right? Correct. 
Didn't we do that by signing the book? Yeah, you'll be approving it in a warrant. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we signed it up. Is that right. over? What was the total? Did she say what the total? The total of eighteen thousand four hundred eighty-one dollars and twenty-eight cents. That put us at a total of fifty thousand four ninety-nine, and the budget has sixty-five thousand. Right. Yeah, so it's not over budget per se, but it's way ahead of where, where you want right. to be in the yeah. course of my years. Kind of part of the year. Yeah, so I think it's raising the issue of. The next couple invoices may put you over budget, and those are supposed to go back to you for the same kind of discussion. But sign the warrants, and I think the question of emergency uh, purchase, emergency repair over ten thousand is what she's talking about uh, specifically in the purchase policy. So if it's over ten thousand, you're supposed to get pre approval, which was emergency purchase or emergency order. So if the board understands that as part of the minutes, then by approving the warrant, you're acknowledging all that. You can give a copy of this and I'll just have that on the It's like the law prevention policy and the that's the policy. I haven't seen okay. it. Look at this. Um, this is coming down to see the policy updates. Um, and then, that's there, or did you make a motion for the over expenditure, or are you doing it? No, just at this point, signing the warrants. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the issue of um, $10,000 or more is supposed to have pre, pre approval slide work. Yeah, so there was an emergency purchase, so that wasn't required. But we talk about it at the meeting <laughs> because it was an unusual event. Yes, the UPM intern was very helpful. On uh, on the investment portion, the okay. money, the, like we obviously all voted and we're letting Jen invest our yeah. funds. Where's that money coming into? Is that just going to general funds? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. At some point, should we assign them funds before they go into? Like, could we could we assess those funds some way? They're well, they're automatically assessed to the current its current revenue. So just like you're taking additional tax money in. So okay, it, you're asking more of a June thirty question, okay, which has been sucked up by the highway truck repair. <laughs> kind of that's kind of where I'm getting. Yeah, I can see where that's headed. Yeah, yeah. yeah we can't yeah. assign it right now, but okay. Towards June, you might want to look at your real numbers. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> that's the first part. We just have to be and for Jen and the town administrator and just to just say, yeah, yeah. okay, let's refresh on the year. Anything out? Yeah. Okay. Anything weird happen that we have to make sure we button up? And there always are. So. Um, let's see. So we, she's um, asking us to uh, accept the the uh, fraud present prevention policy and um, to accept the uh, investment policy. Did you guys pick up the notes we did there? We'll make the motion. Yeah, once we're done. I read it. It got sent to us. Yeah. yeah. Second. Yeah. Okay. Um. Favor of accepting both the uh, point of fraud, I'm sorry to say, fraud prevention policy and the uh, investment policy signify by saying on it. Okay. Anybody opposed? Anybody abstaining? And a, and a thank you to the intern. You know, December 5th, we're up at the North Hyde Park Fire Station. We are? With, with North Hyde Park? Yeah. Yeah, with North Hyde Park and Eden. We do the, the budget up there. At 7 o'clock. 
on the 5th of December. So we sort of end up with three, and then we have the 12th and the 19th for our regular meetings, which are sort of really get through the rest of the budgets and crunch times and start thinking about um, some interesting decisions. Um, got any other new or we might want to think? Yeah, we should go into executive session just briefly. Discuss personnel. Yeah, yeah. You guys have anything else you want to chip in? I'm sorry, what did you just say? Do you have anything else you want to chip in? No. <laughs> She's had enough. She's had enough. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.